Hello Facebook, hello YouTube, it is Ruben. I'm back again with another Ruben report. And today's update, we are going to be doing a continuation of where I left off yesterday. This is going to be my MPG experiment, part three and a half, or 3.5, 3.2. Pretty much just a continuation of part three of the video. And um, today we're gonna to be doing the actual MPG experiment also a top speed test okay so we're gonna see now how the new gearing on this bike has changed the overall power band and um, where the rpms still sit um, within the low range and mainly focusing on how it's affect the top speed overall and where the rpm sit in the high range as well um, and because we're gonna be doing a top speed test I, I, w I came up with the idea to not only test the MPG on my normal commute, but I also want to test the MPG on the freeway because my theory, I mean, it's just a theory. Um, I'm just going to make this claim or assumption and we'll test it. I, I believe that now that the bike has geared down, that it doesn't require as much energy to roll the bike overall. It doesn't require as much energy to roll off the line, and it also doesn't require that as much energy to keep the bike in motion. So my theory is that my highway MPG will also improve, not only, not only because I have the new spark plug in there, but also because the bike just overall doesn't need as much power or as much energy to um, maintain higher speeds. But we'll, we'll test that theory, we'll see what our highway MPG is going to be. And we're also, uh, of course, going to see how the MPG is overall affected in my general new commute that I'll have, which is back roads, trying to keep it below 70. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and head out. I'm going to go to the gas station, top off, just like last time, reset the trip computers, and then we'll, we will do the back road test first. All right, guys, I went ahead and reset the trip. I topped off. That's the current mileage. Oh, man, guys, look at these gas prices. It's over five dollars already. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a screenshot of my GPS app as well. All right, guys. Um, here I am now, rolling off from a standstill, three thousand RPMs. Um, I've pretty much been using the same uh, riding technique. However, now with this new RPM threshold being at 3000 RPMs, I have modified my technique a bit. So instead of allowing the bike to go up to 4000 and shift at 6000, I decided to roll off from 3000 and shift when the bike hit 5000. So I basically just shifted everything downwards by about 1000 RPMs because the goal here is to keep the bike at the lowest RPMs as possible, especially doing uh, city speeds. Um, and that way um, I'll, in turn, I should save the even more fuel. Uh, and riding that way with this new technique, the bike just felt a lot smoother everything felt a lot more natural you know and you don't really get to notice it until you you make this gearing change and I know for some of you guys out there um, who are a lot you know lighter than I am or just have a lot lighter load on the bike um, it probably doesn't even apply to you because uh, you know, you, it, with stock gearing, you could probably roll off the line in 3,000 or 2,500 anyway. But for someone of my size, 
it was like a night and day difference you know, the bike is just much more smoother now much more uh, natural feeling um, rolling from from a stop and I'm curious to see how much of a difference the 13 tooth front sprocket is going to make uh, once I install that as well but um, <clears throat> keeping the the bike through these lower rpms I, I pretty much like i said before i was just shifting up whenever i needed to and once we got onto the longer straights is when i started to um, pretty much keep up with traffic going as high as maybe 68 69 indicated i tried to stay below 70 miles an hour as much as possible and i and i think i i did um we stayed in going those speeds of 69 miles an hour or so uh, we were hovering around 7,000 rpms and sometimes a little bit above it depending on if there was like a slight hill or or a little bit of a, a wind but there really wasn't much wind uh, going on this back back roads um, everything went smooth felt a lot smoother a lot more tame and a lot more relaxing you know the bike in general just feels like it pulls me a lot easier it pulls me um, with less power that's just the way that it felt and it's almost, it's almost like it's a totally different bike now yeah Alright, I'm going to let you guys continue to observe and watch um, my tachometer and how it is that I was riding the bike. Um, one other thing I need to add <laughs> before I uh, mute myself. Rolling off of the line, I barely have to give the bike any, any gas now. So it's pretty hard to see my hands in this particular camera angle but rolling off of the line I would have to roll the throttle back just a tiny bit a very tiny bit and doing so once I let the clutch out it's already at 3000 rpm so I pretty much I got it down packed <laughs> where I would roll the throttle just a tiny bit let the clutch out and I and automatically roll so it was like muscle memory now and uh, I would also just keep my hand in that position, maybe even turn it slightly to allow the bike to continue to accelerate up to 5,000 RPMs and I would just shift every time I hit 5,000. And so now I don't even have to use that much throttle either. And I think that's huge because the more you roll on the throttle, the more uh, gas that the computer is thinking that you need, most likely, and is dumping into the into the engine to try to get you, you know, more more power that you're that you're asking for. So knowing that I don't even have to roll the throttle as much either, hopefully, has saved me a lot more gas, <laughs> uh, you know, fuel consumption, which we'll see the results at the end. I'm gonna keep them to, to the end you guys gotta watch to the end to see all the results or you could just skip to the end if you want to fine by me but i'm gonna go ahead and mute myself now and let you guys continue to enjoy the scenery and observe um, the performance of the bike now in its current gearing form
all right guys um i don't know if you guys uh noticed but while i was uh, waiting there for that stoplight and it was just wouldn't turn green hate when that happens but uh i guess nobody was there so i just whipped around real quick got to the gas station um anyway um now we're going on the path to good get on the highway and with getting on the highway man i'd have to say riding on the highway was probably the worst conditions that i have ridden the bike as of yet the amount of wind that i was experiencing while on this on the highway was ridiculous and you might be able to just observe how i'm kind of wobbling left and right um and how much force is being pushed on my windscreen there the bike had to really fight <laughs> to uh to stay in or to keep up with traffic nonetheless we were able to um power through it i stayed in the slow lane and i think the top speed indicated speed that i reached was 78 and as you also see there's also some certain times where i was actually able to pass up folks which was astonishing but <clears throat> yeah as far as top speed goes um i would i would argue that it's pretty much the same as it was prior uh with the stock gearing um i I've never tested the stock gearing in such windy conditions, but previously when I was riding in relatively windy conditions, um, I was averaging, my average top speed was about 69, and he, yeah, that was GPS, um, or I indicated 75, and here I was pretty much doing almost the same thing but i was a little bit under it in in a lot of sections just because the the wind was just so strong and yeah uh, i think the, the absolute top speed that i reached i looked at the gps um, while i was on the highway was a uh, 73 miles an hour gps um, so I, I can't really compare this to um, stock gearing again, just because I've never ridden in such conditions. I um, probably have to redo this test uh, at some other point in time where it's not super windy. But I generally want to say uh, that the bike does definitely pull me a lot easier. Um, but does that actually equate to better gas mileage? That's the big question. And so we will find out at the end.
All right, guys, I made it back home. We got the, the numbers and I got uh, the results. And starting with my commute um, on the back roads, starting with that, um, the way that the bike handled in just in general, um, being able to roll off the line at a lot slower pace, the bike just moved and, and rode a whole lot smoother than before. If you, I don't know if you guys noticed in the video, but with my throttle hand, I was barely moving it. I, I, all I did was twist it just a tiny bit, just like this. And while having it in this position, while at a stop, letting out the clutch, it's already at 3K RPMs and you, and you just roll off. And I could keep my hand there and wait till it gets up to 5,000 RPMs and shift up. And that's what I was doing. Just, I, I shifted my previous um, power band with the old gearing from 4,000 RPMs to 6,000 RPMs. I shifted it down a whole 1,000 RPM. So I was keeping the bike in the city when I was riding in the city between 3,000 and 5,000 RPMs instead of 4,000, 6,000. So the bike just felt a whole lot smoother, um, a whole lot tamer. And doing that in conjunction with, um, you know, just keeping it, the whole RPMs down, I was able to achieve uh, even better MPG results. So the distance that we have traveled from the gas station to uh, the midway point at the other gas station was, a, I think was 28.2 miles. And I will put up the screenshots right now. Okay, so you guys saw the um, GPS app. You guys also saw uh, how many gallons we use. And the overall MPG result that we have achieved was a whopping 58.6. So yes, dropping the gearing, um, allowing me to roll off of the line a lot easier. And just in general, keeping the RPMs down in most situations has saved me another a little bit over one mpg so i'm glad that that worked out now as fine as far as riding on the highway totally different story <laughs> um, i would have to say that riding on the highway i probably was riding in the worst conditions i have ridden in yet as far as wind is concerned there was crosswind headwind mostly headwind almost the, the whole entire way and if you guys saw me in the video there was points where i was kind of wobbling and and, and and jerking almost dancing with the bike to, to keep it up sh straight i was really having a hard time pushing up against that wind but um, we still managed to power through it and keep up with traffic and I think a my top speed well I'll go ahead and put the screenshot up right now so my top speed was 73 miles an hour and I actually forgot to reset the tripometer. So do, just doing a little bit of math, um, we had I think 54.3 miles minus 28.2. So that comes out to about 26.1. And the amount of gallons that we use, um, I actually spilled a, a tiny bit. So it really should have been like 0 0.62 or 0 0.61 something. But nonetheless, um, MPG is pretty much almost similar to what I had before. It's a, but a slight, 
slightly more. Uh, I think I got now 42 MPG instead of, um, you know, 41. So not that big of a difference, not that much of a surprise, especially knowing that the bike had to ride in such extreme windy conditions <sighs> this time. But it was still, still an increase nonetheless. I'll, I'll take a win where I can take a win. So we have concluded what um, that so far with this series, we have concluded that the biggest impact to your overall MPG performance is undoubtedly going to be the rider's behavior. Next will be the spark plug change. We'll give you an inter incremental uh, difference. Small, but still a difference. And if you are a much heavier rider like myself, or you're just going to be loading the bike, and you know a, a lot heavier, you're going to want to bring those RPMs down, and that's also a key. The lower you can keep the RPMs down when rolling off from a standstill, and the lower you can keep the RPMs down while riding in the city, the better. And so changing your gearing is definitely going to help you reduce those RPMs. So that way you can save a lot of uh, energy and, and fuel uh, doing that as well. So with the overall up with the upgrade so far, I've managed to have my MPG jump from 55 miles to the gallon to 58.6 with the small upgrades that I've had so far. And I'm very curious to see how the 13 tooth front sprocket when it finally shows up is going to reduce the uh, rpms required to roll off the line even further and i'm also curious to see how it's going to affect my top end performance as well um, in general i just want to say that the bike it just feels like it pulls me a whole lot easier in general um but yeah very very curious to see what that 13 tooth sprocket is, is going to do but that pretty much wraps things up for now um, it's gonna be a while before that front sprocket shows up so until next time guys you know stay safe out there and, and yeah peace <laughs>